years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex Bennett. This is the Ramble. It goes from now until midnight. That would be Eastern Daylight Time, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, once every couple of weeks, uh, we like to talk to somebody very, very special. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a place called Lake Oswego. Oswego. You say it's so funny. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Lake Oswego. And it's in it's in where is it, folks? Iowa. No, it's in uh, it's in um, uh, Oregon, and it's right near Portland, right? It's like a suburb of Portland. Is that it's what it is? First, it's the first suburb to the south of Portland. I see. And uh, she's been living there for how many years are now there? It's been a while. Nine. Nine, yeah, she went from Portland, Maine, to Portland, Oregon. She which confused a few friends. And she was born in Portland, Oregon. So you know, uh, Portland has played a great part in your life, I imagine. You know. Well, I left here when I was fifteen. So, uh, I mean, I visited my father and my brother and my aunt after you know I had moved away, but I didn't spend that much time here. So. Um, you know, I consider New York City my home. I mean, the moment we got there, you felt like I he, knew he, this is where I belong. I, and I still do. I'm uh, just in the wrong place. <laughs> I originally, when I first came here, felt that way as well. Because as I grew up as a kid in California with Jewish parents in Marin County, we were one of few Jewish families in Marin County. In fact, they had the Marin County Jewish Community Center, and I think there were only 300 families that were members of it. Well, I was okay. going to say you always were alone there. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when I was living in North Beach, uh, the, I thought that uh, the first name in my religion was Dirty because they all called me a dirty Jew. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I, I just always felt out of place, you know. And then when we moved to New York, I went, this is like I've always felt like I've lived here, you know, because mm -hmm. my mother was from New York, you know. Was the rhythms of the city, and the, um, I just, I just got it. You know, we lived in a bunch of cities before we got to New mm -hmm. York, um, and you know, I was pretty well convinced that Houston was not going to be my permanent home, <laughs> yeah. nor Chicago, nor Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, but New York was, oh, that's like I've been looking for this place all my life. Yeah, but you know something? I got to tell you, uh, I did miss Houston when we left it. I miss people. I didn't miss Houston. You didn't miss Houston. Okay. Did here? Here was the thing that I noticed about Houston. Um, when we left it and we came to New York, and then we were here for a while, and we would call friends in Houston, we would suddenly notice they had a Texas accent, but we never heard that while we were there. And you came out of it with a Texas accent that lingered like for great years. Aunt Edith, who lived here in Portland, and we always talked once a week for an hour or so on the telephone. Um, after we had been in Texas for a while, and not this was before we left, she said, Ronnie, I'm going to send you a check, and I want you to go get some elocution lessons because you sound too much like a Texan. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember how shocked I was. We hadn't been there very long, and some people we'd met came to dinner one night, and as they were leaving at the door, I, I heard myself say, and I couldn't make myself stop, Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I don't mean this as any... Uh, oh, let me turn my little light on here. I, I don't mean this as any degradation of the Texans and their ability to speak the English language. Uh, but it is lazier English. You know, well, you it's just... You drop a lot of the endings. You, yeah, you drop a lot of endings and you talk like this, you know, and it's kind of lazy. Uh, I'm not saying that it's wrong. Some people have said that actually some of the southern dialects are the purest American dialects. You know yeah. what, though? When when we go through like this particular year coming up, 
when there are going to be a lot of people around, or just anybody in Congress that comes from the southern states, mm -hmm. uh, and other reasons to hear people who come from there. I'm surprised. It seems to me that over our lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of gotten over local accent, regional accents. They're not so many. They're anymore. not as prominent, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, if you go to Texas, you don't hear the Texas accent as much. It's not as pronounced as when we lived there. I think it's media that we all hear kind of this bland, even English language. So, but what did we default to? Did we default to California? Did we default to New York? I mean, not uh, New York. <laughs> well, I always liked the New York accent. You know, there are many. If I met up with a woman who had like a, a real New York accent, man, it made me hot. I don't know why. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway. In fact, uh, a girlfriend I had after we broke up, uh, Naomi, God, she had like a real New York accent. I mean, she was, and she was from Long Island. That's how you pronounce it, folks, Long Island. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you're right. I mean, we have, because of television, because of media, uh, still you go into some of those southern states and they're speaking a language you don't speak. They, no, I haven't they, been to the South in decades. I mean, so they, I, it, when you see, like, on television, they, there's a demonstration, and it's in the South, and they talk to people. You can, you know, it's really heavy, okay? But I... Uh, not all the time. It's not It's not universal anymore, I don't think. I always thought, being from California, I didn't have an accent, and then I was told by people in other parts of the country they could hear an accent, you know. Yeah, I can't describe it. There's one here, too, that I noticed when I first came back here, yeah. um, that I'd always insisted that Oregon didn't, or at least I don't know about the rest of you Oregon. You felt that Oregon didn't have one, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it does, and it is a certain way you say certain vowels, Yeah. Um, which I can't duplicate anymore. Right. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway. Right. So we how all understand each other more or less. <laughs> yes. So uh, to get you feeling like Texas, how y'all feeling? <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. I'm all right. Yeah. You know, I want to complain about something. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you you know that this is the Medicare annual enrollment period where you can do all kinds of things of changing your medical coverage with Medicare. Yeah, that's for our older listeners who are listening, which is most of you. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. and um, and in my case... Every year I check to see how much my Part D prescription drug coverage has changed and do I need a new one or can I stick with this one? Mm -hmm. And Medicare made a very big deal that they had updated and redone their website and it was easier to use and there was more information this year. Mm -hmm. So the day came. It's really tedious work to go in and do this. And so finally I worked my way up to it a week or 10 days ago. And I went and I, all my drugs are there and their dosages and all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I pulled up the first, there are several, in fact, in my case, there are 28 um, pro plans I can choose from. So I pulled up the first one, which is the one I have mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And there's my list of drugs and it lists the name of the drug and what the dosage is. And then it has a column that says something like number, I think. And my initial guess was the number of pills or whatever that you're taking. And then how much it will cost in retail and after you're deductible and, you know, all the ways they break it up just to confuse yeah. us all. Right. And um, so I looked at it and it said that there I had two inhalers. I mean, the other two or three or four drugs I take aren't very big deal and they were fine. And the, the two inhalers that I used, one of them said that it was going to cost me 25,000 a month uh -huh. and the other was 15,000 a month. Well, that's out of the question. You know? yeah, yeah. I'm not paying that much now and I'm not going to pay that next year. I'll just have to live without them if they can't find a substitute. Right. Um, so, uh, I then, as I said, there are 28 plans I can choose from. So I started working my way down. Well, some have ridiculous 
um, pre monthly premiums, like, you know, several hundred dollars a month. Well, you know, I need that to go toward the 25,000. Yeah. And, uh, and others have other reasons not to choose them. But I went 28 of them, Alex. I went through every bloody one of them. And they all charge something around 25000 or 15000 per month. Did you hear that part? Per month? Per month. Um, this is for the insurance <laughs> policy? I'm sorry, what? You say this is for the insurance policy? For my drugs, yes. Part D of Medicare. Oh, my God. And uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to have to call around. Well, the thing is, if you call Medicare... Those people can answer very simple questions, but they can't go beyond that. Well, they have to look at the same the same book you're probably looking at online. Well, I don't really you care. But the point is, you don't talk to them for any length of time. Yeah. And um, and then I called the insurance company that covers me now. Yeah. And um, we won't mention their name because when somebody finally answered the phone, mm -hmm. and I explained I needed to discuss the price of these drugs. Right. right. She said to me, well, we're going to have to go online. Are you at your computer? I said, I'm on the page with my drugs. She said, well, now let's start at the beginning. Go to your computer and up at the top, type in www. I said, stop this. <laughs> what information do you need to get on the page with me? And she said, well, let's start and make sure you're in the right place. So start with W. W. <laughs> no, we're not going to have this conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much, but I think I'll go now. And I tried a couple of the times because, you know, every time you call back, you get a different person. So maybe once in a while you get Oh, I've done up. that. I've done that for certain things, not something like this, but certain things, some company I'm dealing with or whatever. And I've called back twice, three times, and gotten three different answers. Well, oh, well, there's that. But I'm not, that's not what I'm discussing right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so I thought about it, and I made lists of people I could call. And one of the places I called was at uh, was OHSU, which is the medical center and medical school and the place where I get all my treatment. Right. My cancer and my COPD. And there's a department called patient relations. I think that means complaints, but yeah. I just wanted to ask a question. Yeah. And the woman said she was really sorry they didn't help with Medicare or any other insurance. She's, and uh, <clears throat> so I hung up. And I'm still trying to figure out places to call. And, you know, there's an organization called in different name in different states, but it's yeah. sort of like Sheba. Yeah. And they are trained volunteers who... I've met a few of them, two of them in my life, and they are just brilliantly informed on all things Medicare. Mm -hmm. I'll track down one of those people. But before I could get around to it, the woman I had talked to at the patient's place, you know, at the whatever I called it, um, at the medical center, she called my phone rang. She called me back. She said, you know, one of my co-workers overheard my end of our conversation, mm. and she said, there's a secret number I'm not going to mention to you on this where, and an actual person answers. You don't have to go to the phone tree, and they can probably help you. Here's the number. Yeah. Well, apparently it's a secret number. And I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave it a whirl, and I got a person answered the phone, a real person. Yeah. And... And I explained my problem that twenty I was only paying like a hundred dollars a month now and they're telling me online that I have to pay twenty five thousand a month next year. And uh, she said, No, no, no. She said, Are you on that page? And I said, Yes. She didn't make me go through the whole thing with W W W, yeah. And um she said, Do you see the row where it says number? Tell me what it says. I said, It says sixty. And um she says the column before it uh, tells you either how many pills or how many inhales you have, mm -hmm. depending on whether you're using pills or inhalers. And in that case, on the $25,000 one, it said 60 because I use it twice a day. Mm -hmm. She said, now there's a place where you can edit the column that just says number or whatever the word is. I've forgotten maybe. Um, and she said, just go in and change that 60 to 1 and then reload the page. And what the Medicare website had done 
is they thought what that ended up doing was ordering me 60 inhalers per month. Oh. One inhaler with 60 doses. <laughs> so people all over the country are running into this unless they've fixed it by now. That was about a week ago. But and there's still some problem. I mean, it's still way high that I can't afford. You know, so I'll I'll go ahead and I'll deal with that and I'll talk to people. But whoa, what a mistake! They think I'm going to get 60 inhalers. This made sense to somebody. <laughs> yeah, they, you want they, you thought they wanted to know how many inhales you did a month. You know. No, I didn't want to know anything. They were telling me. Yeah, yeah, boy. I didn't, that, um, that's just, you know. I mean, but and and you were not. You were not un internet savvy or f filling out forms on so, the internet savvy. I mean, I'm savvy. not afraid of it because I started using right, them. Right, right. So, so I mean, much you you know that than a lot of but, people my age. But, 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 but what about somebody your age who's completely mystified by all of this? They can't do anything. You know, to begin with, there's the assumption that they can even know how to go online. I mean, well, I, that's how they were treating me. Like, I well, I think that's why they were treating you that way. Is they probably find that most people. Well, they don't have to have that tone in their voice. Like, I'm an idiot. Uh, well, uh, they don't know you from an idiot. But why would <laughs> okay. you treat anybody that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, you know, I mean, um, I am, uh, you know, I uh, not the same thing. But I, I have all this online stuff where. I have to deal with like uh, uh, tech companies, servers, people who we run servers. And it's amazing the range of people I deal with in knowledge. I'll, if I get somebody, I, I usually, I hate to be kind of racist about this, but if I get somebody who speaks good English, who I apparently is in the United States, I get a good answer. Not you know, every time. I have gotten some very good answers. But if I, but if I wind up not everyone who works in the United States but, is good at this. But if I talk to somebody in India, uh, you know, it, it becomes a real problem. I found that I say now, uh, would you just uh, turn me over to somebody in the United States? And in most cases, they will gladly do that. I've had terrific help from somebody in in, in the Philippines too. I had a wonderful helper in the Philippines once. Um, I don't think it, for me, it has nothing to do no, with I'll, geography. Uh, you want me to give you the best one? I get, okay. make a call. I make a call. It's to Amazon. But it's the, Amazon is now farming this stuff out to, I don't know, Sri Lanka or something, right? They all do. And, and I'm talking to the guy, and in the background, people are shouting and screaming and having a party. And I said, can you, can you, like, turn that down? Can you ask them to be quiet so I can talk to you? I couldn't even hear him. And he said, oh, no, I can't do that. I went, you know, I finally said, would you turn me over well, to somebody? I mean, that, see, you're blaming that on, on on a country instead of a person or an office. Well, this is a whole lot. Well, anyway, so I said, turn me over to somebody in the United States. So next thing I know, I wait a little while, me, that, that standby music they have. And um, uh, I get somebody in the United States, and I, I ask them a question, and she gives me the answer to it. And I said, by the way. I have a complaint about your customer service. Oh, please. Wait please don't tell me you did wait, this. Wait a minute. I said, every time... I, and she this can't happened do twice. anything. This Why do you do that? Well, listen to me. It happened twice. I said that I had called Amazon and gotten this office in which everybody in the background is having a party. And she said, you know, that's strange because I get them turning stuff over to me. And in the background, I always hear people having a party. Yeah, you know. And she said, I, and she says, that's very unprofessional. I will report it. I think something should be done about it. Yeah. You know, uh, it wasn't there, being there's a funny so thing. many things that um, I, I just, I guess I just don't have time for that much anymore. Um, it, it's just get, you know, do whatever is necessary to get done as quickly as possible. These kind of boring tasks. Yeah. They tend to take up so much space and time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, a lot of things is hard to, I got lucky with the woman that they gave me the phone number to call that mm -hmm. she just automatically knew what my problem was. I mean, well, maybe did you know, lots well, of people are having that problem. The, the person you called, who were they? Were they somebody who worked with the government? I mean, 
Was it? I'm sorry. What? With the person you called that? I thought I told you the Sheba person. Sheba. Sheba. I'm sorry. Yes, Sheba. What? I told you. I explained that to you five minutes uh, ago. Oh, I didn't get that. To be honest with you, it was... it's there's a it's there are 50 of them, one in each state. They're called different things. California has one called, I don't know, something with the word California in it. In Oregon, it's Sheba. Other places have different names. Sheba is an acronym. I don't know or care what it stands for. And these people are highly trained volunteers oh. to help people with Medicaid. Wow. And I used to know two of them that we were on a committee or a board together seven or eight years ago two of them that were Sheba helpers with Medicare. Mm. And they were just amazing. They knew everything. And I'm pretty sure... But they don't give this number out freely. I don't know. I did not ask. Well, she said this is a private number. Don't... No, you know. she didn't say I did. It's not what I said. You said... She said you couldn't give... She couldn't give it out or something, and then she told you what it was. Something like that. I'm sorry, What? When I'm you talk to no 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 when you talk to this one woman who gave you that number yes she was kind of acting like she wasn't supposed to give it out no that's how i got it well no no oh, okay i'm i'm getting old um be nice to older people okay um so anyway i just i'm it just they it's not just medicare it's also the insurance companies that make it so hard. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they tout that the, the company that, that has my coverage this year has got a big thing on their website about how wonderful their customer care is, and they've won all kinds of accolades for their customer service. They were worse than Medicare when I was still calling around. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're the ones that said to me, well, now go up at the top of your browser. You got your browser open and then type in, you know, geez, you know, um, I would have indicated if I didn't know how to do this. You know? <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm just I'm I, I'm kind of very lucky. I think I told you about my insurance because I'm uh, sag after it told me as a senior, I could get their senior plan for that 20 percent donut. Uh, and um, it has been terrific. I mean, it, it, you know, for what is it, five hundred, two thousand dollars a year, which my wife's company pays for, we get twenty five hundred dollars in dental. Uh, we get prescription. You which, can't walk in a dentist's office for that amount of money. Well, no, but i believe me, I've had all my teeth taken care of. That twenty five hundred really helped. Really helped. Usually, they're, sure did, usually yes. they're fifteen hundred. This one's twenty five. Hey, can know. we not do this anymore? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let me finish. Uh, when it came to drugs, they use a thing called Express Scripts, and you have to buy three months at a time. So I buy three months at a time, and I thought, oh God, you know, I was paying like two hundred dollars a month for my medicine at the time. It's going to wind up being six hundred dollars. You know that I'm going to have to pay all at once. And I went in. It's cheaper. I was paying two hundred dollars a month right now because they lowered one of my drugs by seventy-five dollars. I'm paying a hundred and sixteen dollars a month instead of two hundred. Uh, excuse me, for three months than I am for two hundred dollars a month. I mean, it, it's incredible. But I'm very lucky that 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 came along, you know, and I'm able to use it, and that. I stayed in the union that long, you know, even though I never had any use for it. So, but uh, how are you feeling? I feel okay. You look good. You look good. You know. Um, I feel my bigger problem in day to day. Mm -hmm. This is funny to say after all this time is COPD, the breathing problems as yeah. opposed to cancer. And that has nothing to do with the rest of the conditions at all. What conditions? Well, I mean, the cancer thing. It has nothing to do with the cancer, the it's COPD. It's two different diseases. In other words, you would have this. If you didn't have the cancer, you would have the COPD. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's much harder to deal with the cancer. As far as I know, I don't have cancer in terms of having any um, symptoms of anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, it's come that time again. 
that next week I have another CT scan to see what the cancer's been doing inside there, you know, how many other organs it's decided to move into. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm terrified. I'm terrified every time. Yeah. And they do this, what, every six months, something like that? Every no, three months. Every three months. Yeah, mm -hmm. boy. Well, you know, uh, my thoughts will be with you, yeah, as they yes. say. You know, they always not, are. It's not... Um, and when, when the, the woman called to make the appointment, I said, my God, could we just skip it? And uh, she said, you know, you don't, it's up to you. And uh, so it's been three months, so I'll go. Yeah. I mean, do you sometimes just say, hey, enough of this potchking around, you know, what's it going to say? It's just going to say it's worse or it's, it hasn't spread as much? I mean, either way, at some point there's a termination to this. And why go through all the terrorizing of myself while this this process is going oh, on? It's good practice. Huh? <laughs> it's good practice. How can I control my terror? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, what I'm saying is, you know, you you say to yourself, uh, "Hey, listen, if I go, it's either spread more or it hasn't, and I'm not going to change that by having the scan." You know, get what I'm saying? And so, therefore, why should I have yes. the scan and terrorize myself? Why don't I just live my life until there's no longer life to live? Well, you know, it's part of it is that I'm kind of fascinated. You know, up front, when I realized it didn't take very long, uh, how much time I was going to be spending mm -hmm. with medical people mm -hmm. in a big deal, huge medical facility, um, there's always... There's always lots of wait time in those situations. So I just decided to study their world. I don't know anything about the medical world. I've been so healthy until now. Yeah. And uh, I mean, once in a while I'd show up at a doctor's office, but not at a big major medical complex like this. Um, there are five hospitals there, for heaven's sake. And, um, and a medical school and a dental school and on and on and on. Um, and it's a whole different world from you and me and how we've lived. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, it's they're all they're taking care of people that are at their worst. You know, mm -hmm. we're all there. We're either in a lot of pain or we're frightened. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a death thing to be frightened of what they're going to do to all the different things doctors and surgeons and stuff can do to you you know it's um <clears throat> there's a lot to especially when you don't understand any of it and you're not part of that world and you don't know how it operates or it's easy to be frightened yeah you know? yeah even if it weren't life or death well it sounds like you're in good hands yeah mm -hmm. and it's all I, you, I feel like i am in good hands um it's just the damn scans every now and then, you know? Yeah, just yeah. Hard. Yeah, well, you thought that when you graduated school, you'd never get tests again. And, then, <laughs> you know, and, and this is kind of like that, you know. Uh, you're waiting for the, for, for the test scores to come in. And, and uh, where you were terrorized by that every half a year or something like that, now you're terrorized by this. It, it's, you know. I, know I don't want to say terrorized. I just, I would rather not know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't, it's been almost two and a half years, Alex, since I was diagnosed. And I knew something was wrong with me for six months before that until they figured out what it was. And and I've lived long beyond my best by date, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the people with pancreatic cancer don't live very few live more than a year after they're diagnosed. So, hey, I won some kind of lottery here that not only have I been here longer than that, but most of the time feeling pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So I won the lottery here. I really uh, don't let me, have we're, any we're, we're running over, but I just want to ask you a quick question. Your, your thoughts about Alex Trebek. I mean, he's made his pancreatic cancer very public. Yes. And and that's a good thing. You know, I, I don't think it's a bad thing, but... Uh, I don't give him much hope. Well, the, he wasn't diagnosed until stage four. Mm -hmm. And while, from what he's told, I'm only operating on what he said in those little interviews that he's done, is that uh, when he was going through chemo, which 
apparently he had a much rougher time with chemo than I did. He described just like being curled up on the floor at work with pain. Mm -hmm. And I never went through anything that bad at all, nowhere near what he was describing. Right. Um, and, uh, and he just recently recorded a PSA mm -hmm. uh, because the 21st of this month will be World Pancreatic Cancer Day. So he recorded it for that. Um, and I think that it's a good thing for someone um, of his renown, right. fame, right. You know, right. millions of people know who he is, mm -hmm. to talk about this because pancreatic cancer doesn't get enough attention. The main reason is that compared to lung cancer, prostate cancer, a um, couple of other cancers, very or few, many fewer people get pancreatic cancer. It's a right. rare cancer. Um, so it doesn't get as much attention or as much research money. So it's a good thing. Well, is it, it's, like, it is considered to be the deadliest cancer, right? One of them. Not, yeah. not, I think there's another one. that. I, I, however, they measure deadliness. Yeah. I don't know. But it's up there. You well, know? you were very lucky. My point of view, it's we way have, too we, far up there. We, we have to get going here. But, but you were very lucky in that most people who have pancreatic cancer are just told, go home, say goodbye to your friends and neighbors. You're going to be gone in six months. You know? And in your case, they said, we can do something about it, or we can try and do something about it. And they had the operation, and it was horrible. They got you open like a carp. And then... Yes, they did. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, it was it was, it was was pretty true. pretty severe oh, as an operation. They remove stuff, they shear stuff off. I mean, it was, you know. But, basically, no pancreatic cancer now. But No, that's not true. The pancreas has been hit again, or is it moved, just moved to other organs? It moved out to other it's, organs. Pan I, my pancreas, my lungs, and my peritoneum, oh, at okay. least. And we'll find out if there are more next week. Wow. Wow. Anyway, you're looking good. Thank you. You know. I feel good, except for a couple little things, but no big deal. No big deal. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my ex-wife. That's you spend the whole time on my cancer and Medicare. Yeah, sure. Why not? Fuck them. You know, I mean, you know, nobody likes to hear what old people have to say, but we're going to say it anyway. I think it's important what you had to say about it. And if more people want to find out what it's like to suddenly get older, uh, time goes by dot net is your blog and it is terrific. I mean, I read it on a fairly regular basis and I'm uh, anybody who reads it is, I think, their knowledge is greatly enhanced and they know they know the terror they have to look forward to <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'm not real good at not telling the truth you know yeah, yeah right good talk to you ronnie you too ronnie bennett ladies and gentlemen five years and still talking this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before ah yes and there she was ronnie bennett uh doing her thing and we will you know we loved her years ago and then we love her again now it's 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 nice you know anyway listen i'm turning on the skype lines now and you can call and uh, talk to me about whatever you want to talk to me about. Oh, I forgot to turn on the light there. I turned it on during the interview, and I figured I'd turn it on now, and then everything would match, because I always try to wear the same clothes that I wore in the interview, in spite of the fact that we did it earlier today. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I, got, I always got to remember to turn that down. Let's see. Who's calling? Ah, it's Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see. Once we get a picture on Charlie... I can uh, give him a slot here. Hello, Charlie, you there? Charlie, you there? Oh, oh, I'm here. Yeah, you're there. Okay, you show me, your, turn on your camera. Um, it's on. There we go. It's on now. There we go. Because it isn't until I see a camera here that I can, uh, let's, wait a minute. Where, where's, oh, there's Charles Walls right at the yep. bottom. There we go. Okay, and put them. Hi, Charlie. How you doing? Doing great. What you been doing? 
Uh, you... I don't know how election turned out here, but it looks like Kentucky and Virginia Democrats did pretty good. Yeah, the uh, governor in Kentucky was it? I saw yeah. Vernon uh, posted a thing, and it was uh, let's see here. Uh, Kentucky governor race went to, to the Democrats, and the Virginia House and Senate are flipped blue. Now that isn't our the the Senate Senate, is it? No, state Senate, state Senate. and state House in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's still it's, were it's Republican before. You know, it shows that I think maybe Trump has soured people. You know. I think so. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, they were. We were kind of worried in a way. Hello, Jeff. I thought you were going to be out of town. I'm leaving on Sunday. Oh, on Sunday. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, uh, you know, uh, this does not bode well for the Republicans. I mean, these. It was figured that they were going to win races like this. And that uh, we were going to see that there was no perceptible change in those hard uh, red areas. And it looks like maybe the, at least in one situation we got ourselves a, a governor uh, who's, a, who's a Democrat. So yep. uh, it's good. It's good. That's good for the 2020 census mm -hmm. and redistricting. Yeah. Have you been watching MSNBC this evening? No, I mean, yeah. Uh, are they crowing about this? <laughs> I don't think I kept that much on. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, I know, I know that they were happy that uh, Virginia was uh, getting the job. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a mm -hmm. change. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So no Phil tonight or tomorrow night. Or the night after that, because he's in oh, wow. Florida or someplace like that. I don't know. Some, some hellhole of this country he's gone to visit. <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, 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 I'm, uh, you know, I'm happy to hear that about the, uh, the uh, elections and stuff. How are you feeling about all of this, Charlie? Are you getting to feel better about it or... Yeah, I, I'm pretty optimistic about next year. Yeah, I don't think Trump's going to win again. Well, what they're worried about is whether the impeachment is going to be a factor, either to the negative or the positive of the Republicans. You know, and it looks like it hasn't. Uh, it is. It has actually hurt the Republicans, not helped them. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, this should probably embolden the Democrats a great deal. You know, I kind of, uh, you know, I I I kind of feel that uh, this is maybe this is their uh, their 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 race to lose. Yeah. And if anybody can lose a race, you know, snatch yeah. of, uh, uh, defeat from the hands of victory, it's the Democrats. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> look at the uh, look at Hillary. Mm. You know. Yeah, uh, she should have won. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Somebody else could have done better than she did. Well, now we say that in retrospect. You know, I never had any great faith in her anyway. I was never, as you may remember, I was not a big fan. No, but she was better than Trump. She sure wouldn't have done all this crap that Trump's done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, before we go any further, let me... Uh, Martin Scorsese in the New York Times did an op-ed piece today about his statement about Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. And he said something, and I went, gosh, he must have been listening to me when mm -hmm. he referred to these movies as a form of an of a amusement ride. Because I've described them in the past as being like an amusement ride. And he did exactly the same thing. But he wrote this wonderful thing about, you know, why he doesn't consider the movies. He considers them product, you know. And they are, really. But anyway, so I just thought I would mention that. It's one of my I told you so's, you know. So anyway, I'm tired, so I'm going to go to sleep, and you guys can talk to each other. Okay? <laughs> 
Yeah, I went to my uh, my uh, my uh, uh, urologist yesterday, and yeah. uh, he uh, stuck a probe up my ass and looked at it with a rectal, uh, what is it, rectal? Um, uh, so it was a rectal sonogram. Wow. And then he also did his finger, you know, on top of it, and found nothing. He, you know, he did not see anything. But they drew some blood, and I said, do you, say, do you think I'm okay? And he says, well, I can't say. You know, he says, I can't say until I get the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the blood test in, and I'm armed with more information. But you know, so far, so good, you know, so. He didn't want to commit himself. I said, do you think yeah. I have something that's aggressive? He said, well, I never can say anything like that till I, I'm armed with all the information, you know, so. But he did say to me that he doesn't, he doesn't really rush into bi uh, uh, biopsies. He says he thinks that that's a last-ditch effort that you do, so. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, he, he certainly, he didn't find anything. You know, that's good news. So if my PSA has gone up, I don't know why. You know, I mean, uh, for it to be aggressive, you've got to have a tumor down there. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a tumor. It, it, he said he didn't. I said, Did you see anything? He said, no. He said, you know, he said the sonogram isn't 100% that we would see something, but it's, you know, we if, if there's something significant, we would see it. He said, and I don't feel anything when I go in there. So, uh, you know, so far, so good. So he's supposed to so let me know. Are you feeling he's... better? What? Are you feeling better about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me. Uh, so Thursday, he's going to call me. And... Just a... Thursday, he's going to call me and let me know how the blood test came out. He says, if it goes up a little, he says, I'll see you in six months. If it goes down, I'll see you in six months. And if it goes up, you know, we'll have to, it, it, depending on how much it goes up, we'll either see in three months or we'll see, we'll do something about it. You know, we'll go and do a biopsy or whatever. But he's, I said, can it go down? And he said, oh, absolutely. He said, you know, there's no telling where this goes, you know. He's very, what I like about him as opposed to my last doctor is he's very, um, he's not quick to do something. You know, he said to me, look, he said, Medicare pays me $400 to do a biopsy. He said, a biopsy takes me 10 minutes. That's not bad money for 10 minutes work. He said, I could do two, 300 of these if I wanted to. He said, but I don't want to do that. That's not how I make my living. He said, I only want to do biopsies when they're absolutely needed. He said, so we take it a step at a time here, you know. And so far, thing you know, so far I think things are looking okay. You know, if he didn't see anything and he didn't feel anything, uh, I'm sure if there was something significant there, he would have seen it on the on the sonogram, yeah. which he said they basically used to tell how big the prostate is, and mine is just average size, which bothers me because I'd like to feel have a nice big tough prostate, <laughs> but you know, anyway. So that was my visit to the doctor. It was it, while I was there, I felt very comforted by him. Okay, when I mm -hmm. left, I felt good. And <laughs> girlfriend said, "Gee, you feel really good, don't you?" And I said, "Yeah." And as 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 the hours went on, I felt less and less good because that's me. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And I was talking to Ronnie. You know, she has to go in for a, a, a CT scan in about a week. And she's worried about it because, you know, that's when they go and see if there are any new cancers yep. that have spread to the rest of her body or whatever. And I said to her, you know, I told her, I said, it's, it's not the same with me. You know, I haven't got what you've got, okay? In fact, I, I hesitate not to even talk about my little prostate possibility of prostate cancer compared to, you know, her pancreatic cancer. Um, but I said, I know what you're saying about that panicking, because even I panic over these tests, you know, and I'm beginning to think that if I kind of get out of this and it's maybe gone down or something like that, and it doesn't look like I, there's not a good chance that I have something here, uh, I just may stop getting these tests, you know, and just say, if I'm going to die of it, I'm going to die of it. Uh, I said to her, 
I, I didn't know how to say it right, but I said to her that, well, she's dying of this. We know that. We know that she's, you mm -hmm. know, she has a sell-by date, but we don't know what it is exactly. Mm -hmm. And why should she go get these, the CT scan? So she knows how far it's gone? You know, if she's going to die uh, of this, then why get all the tests? You know, why, why, why do you need that? And I, am, am I wrong on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a choice. Yeah. Yeah. That you, you can say, you know, I don't care about the results. Uh, well, no, but the, if they said the results they, will be, yeah. I wake up one day and I'm still alive. The next day, yeah. I'm not alive. But if they said, if they said to her, look, um, you know, we're going to give you a CT scan. If we find more of it, we can do something about that. But there isn't anything they can do about it. They yeah. told her already it's all inoperable. So why get the CT scans? Why terrorize yourself? You know, that's my that might be my theory about it. Yeah. And I, well, I would want to know. You would want to know? I, yeah. yeah. How about you, Jeff? Oh, I would I would want to know. Mm -hmm. I, I would want to know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm more of a scientist, I guess. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, for instance, I have been terrorized by these PSA tests and by mm -hmm. urologists in general for the last 10 years of my life, okay? It's the one guy, for a while, I didn't even go to one. I just said, that's it, you know? And then I had some problem with my PP. I can't remember what it was, and I decided to go... I had to go find a urologist. Uh, but I stopped seeing a urologist because every time I went, I got terrorized. I had the one, one that gave me two cystoscopies because he found microscopic blood in my urine, mm. which it turns out now I have all the time. I've had it yeah. for the last 15 years that I know of. Um, and I just, you know, the guy, he said, well, we got to give you another cystoscopy. We have this blood, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm going. And then, then he went in with the cystoscopy, and I said, well, did you see anything? And he said, I didn't expect to. Well, then what did you what do it for? expect to. <laughs> yeah, what did you do it for? So this is the kind of terrorizing I've had from, from urologists. And this is the first urologist that at least has a gentle touch to his demeanor, you know, mm -hmm. and that I feel won't do anything unnecessary, but he won't not do something that I need, okay? So I feel, I feel good about him, you know? Um, I hope he doesn't have to do something, you know, but uh, it's just, you know, it's just, and it's just, I guess I just live with this thing that all my friends are dying, or getting, having strokes or stuff like that, you know? And it's just, it's, it's, it's not good, you know? And here I am, I'm so far, I'm surviving. Why is that, you know? So, uh, it's like Ronnie said, you know, the, the, the reason so many people are dying is because you're 80 years, gonna be 80 years old, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're out living them all. So, you know, then you pick up the newspaper and there's another movie star or another rock star, yeah. you know, that's died, that, you know, uh, hadn't, uh, you know, that, you know, that, that was kind of a signpost for your life, you know. So you go, okay, well, they're gone. All right. You know. So, yeah. What are you going to do? Those, hmm? those decisions that are, you know, that happen to other people. Mm -hmm. and I, I've known a lot of people who've died. Uh, over the number of years, and always they were the the skinniest, healthiest people with yes. any problems. Yes, and they didn't smoke. They're all, you know, uh, athletic in a certain way, and uh, bingo. Yeah. Well, I have a theory. Find out 
a little bit further, yeah, you might find out that the father had the same life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, of a, what we what we would call early death. Mm-hmm. I have a thing about working out, so I figure I haven't worked out much in my life. I'll go through spurts of working out. I don't know why I suddenly decided to do it. I haven't done it recently. <clears throat> I'll probably go back and start doing the bike. I stopped doing it because I figured maybe that raised my PSA, you know, that kind of exercise. Well, you know, there were things in my life that have changed since my PSA went up. Number one, I've lost a great deal of weight. And, and PSAs are, go, are pretty low if you're fat because you have more blood going through. It's, it's something. I don't know. I read it online that, if in a doctor's report, that they found that obesity causes lower PSAs, all right? Mm. And um, uh, so, I mean, I lost a lot of weight, and I started working out. And all those things in combination could have done something to raise it, you know? So uh, who knows, you know? But um, uh, I didn't, I haven't worked out much in my lifetime. And one time I was interviewing Richard Simmons, and he almost became apoplectic when he, when I told him mm-hmm. this. Um, he said, you should work out a lot, Alex. Working out's good for you. And I said, no, I have a theory, uh, Richard. <laughs> and he said, what's, what's that? And I said, um, I have a theory that if I don't use my body, it won't wear out. <laughs> And uh, uh, he, he then let out with a shriek like I'll never forget. <laughs> he just, <laughs> ah! You know, I said, no, I, I said how I feel about it. Uh, hello, Tony. How are you? You there? You are, Tony? Yeah, pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Hang it in there. Yeah. I but anyway, funny. what I'm saying is, that, so I have a theory. If you don't use your body, uh, if, it won't wear out, you know. I mean, look, look at Marjorie. Marjorie is the, work, she, she's the workout out. queen. <laughs> Uh, uh, she's the workout queen. She has more things wrong with her body than all of us combined. Okay, I mean she's got a bad back. She's got a bad this. She, you know, she did that, and it was all a lot of it. She has to admit was from all this working out. You she know. jogged too, right, Alex? She jogged. She, she biked. You know, that kills your knees. Yeah, I mean, uh, the most exercise I really get is I jerk off, you know. (laughs) But I do it vigorously, and that helps uh, give me, you know, get the, uh, it gets my uh, heart rate up. Uh, How did Minnie suddenly wind up on my watch? I don't want Minnie on my watch. I want Mickey, who says, It's 10.58. Good night, pal. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I love doing that with my watch. And I also, here's the newest thing I do with my watch. If I double click it, see what, I don't know if you can see it, but what comes up, there's a credit card. And oh, I, you got your Apple it, card? It, yeah, and I, it's in the Apple wallet, and I've got that, and I've got my uh, ATM card. And what I do is I, uh, I then double click it, and then I hold it up to the thing, you know, mm-hmm. like this, anywhere near it, and that's it. It's, it's, I don't even have to, so I don't have to pull out my uh, my iPhone or anything like that. Or I can go out without my iPhone, and if I need to, you know, pay for something uh, using the Apple Wallet, I I can do it with the watch. So, isn't that cool? I just love science; it's wonderful. And and also the thing that I'm doing now is I just bought two light bulbs that have Wi-Fi in them. Mm. Light bulbs. Light bulbs. Uh, so, oh, that, turn them off the so that I can turn the light bulbs on and off. <laughs> with that, with, <laughs> I, I'm not going to say it. Well, you've seen this before, haven't you? Echo, turn off network. Oh, excuse me, not network. No, no, hold on. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, Echo, turn off studio. See that? Echo, turn on studio. There we go. Oh, there it goes. See? It's amazing that you can do that. What's I nice like is the light is all the way over there, and it's kind of behind something, so I have to kind of lean in to turn it. So I just walk into the room, and I just say, you know, turn on the, the network, uh, turn on the studio, and it does. And when I go into the guest room, I go, turn on the lamp, and it turns on the lamp. 
you know, turn on the guest room when it turns on a bigger light that I have in there. Uh, it, it really, I kind of like it. it. It really does work nicely. And what you have to do is you have to get little, like I got a plug that you plug the plug into that it then has a Wi-Fi in it and picks it up and all of that. And it's like I'm living in the future like I wanted to when I was a kid. Only the future... Okay, the Jetsons cartoon is coming more and more reality. Remember I used to yell at the boss? No, the Jetsons, the Jetsons cartoon will never come into reality because that was such a bad fucking cartoon. Oh, I like I how they walked Astro it, on the it was, Oh, it was, it was terrible. It was I just... I mean, one. look, you want to you talk about a great space cartoon? Uh, 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 Duck Rogers, okay, was, which is Daffy well, the Duck. The Jetsons are really the Flintstones. No, the, Daffy Duck again. doing Duck Rogers. Duck Rogers? I never yeah, seen that. yeah. You never saw that? I, I like Bugs Bunny, actually, the traditional ones. I used to take off from school. Yeah, but, uh, but, 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 uh, but you I never, never saw Duck Rogers. I really didn't. You never saw Duck You I watch swear, all that shitty Hanna-Barbera crap? I love Hanna-Barbera. I used to watch them religiously on Saturdays. I used to watch the show on Friday night. They previewed the cartoons for Saturday. You'll, you'll appreciate this. I interviewed Hanna Barbera once, and I, I, and I started that. talking to them about cartoons and stuff. And they said to me, "You know more about the cartoons than anybody who's interviewed us." Wow! Well, so they probably appreciate that too. Yeah. I mean, I love the cartoons on Saturday. Yeah, uh, because I was talking about uh, oh god, now I'm, I'm going blank on his name. There was a guy that drew Red Riding Hood for the cartoons were done by Tex Avery. And I knew this guy's name, and I mentioned him, and I just talked about him being a great cartoonist. He said, boy, you, know, you really know a lot about this. I felt good about that, because these two guys who've been in the car, they were great when they were doing MGM, okay? Oh, really? When they were doing MGM cartoons. But when they went and did that television shit, they just ruined animation. <laughs> I mean, that was my, I kind of, I didn't know any, but I liked the superheroes and the things like that. So I was like, oh, wow, this is good. Yeah, but they, they were terribly done cartoons. You know. I know. But I mean, you, if, if you want, bowl of cereal, if you, if you want to see day. like a, a superhero cartoon that was well done, go look at Max Fleischer's Superman cartoons that he oh, I did. I got that on DVD, yeah. Yeah. That was good. Uh, oh, that no, was, they were beautiful. Episode. They were gorgeous. Yeah. You know. Uh, but, uh, oh man, I can't, Hanna-Barbera, that shit just sucked, <laughs> you know, and then, I uh, was Yogi Bear, huh, yeah, I, I thought, Bear. you, you want to know what bothered me about all that, Yogi Bear, they stole everything, okay, mm -hmm. I mean, the Flintstones were the honeymooners. Yeah. And, yeah, and, right. and, and the voices that uh, Dawes Butler did, which I used to love Dawes Butler as a, as a cartoon voice when he was over at Warner Brothers. But when he went to Hanna-Barbera, I mean, he's doing, you know, um, uh, uh, Yogi Bear was, uh, was Art Carney as, as uh, you know, what's his name? Oh, uh, 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 yeah. Ed, Ed Norton. It's, uh, that's the voice he was doing. And at one point, Art Carney even said to, to Hanna-Barbera, I mean, he said, if you wanted that voice, why don't you just give me a call and yeah, hire me? Yeah, you know, that is a good point. He could have did it. Yeah, yeah. He probably couldn't afford him. I actually think or no. I think it, 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 well, they were doing those things on the cheap. I mean, you know. They, they found yeah. that if they, you know, if, if, uh, full frame animation was two cells for every two frame, one cell for every two frames, okay? And if you wanted to get really cheap, you then changed that rate. And what happened was, is with, uh, with Hanna-Barbera, they were doing you know, three cells a second, you know, instead of 24 or, or 12, you know. So, I mean, it was just shitty. It was shitty animation. And I loved it. I didn't and, know yeah, And the that. worst animation was, uh, did you ever see, what was it? Which one? God, my mind What's is just a blank <laughs> because of these pills I've been taking. They just robbed me of all my memory. Um, Which one? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the cartoon where they, what they did, the Space Ghost, they did this. And they oh, did it. They did it with space. with Crash PC, yeah. Crash Corrigan, Cra oh, I never saw that uh, Crash Craddock. I can't remember what the name of the cartoon was. Where 
it, for animation, you, they just had a still cartoon face, and then they had real human lips ta talking yeah, yeah, about clutch cargo. Was kind of like clutch like cargo. Was that was it. Yeah. That was the worst fucking animation of all time. Those people should have been killed. Okay, <laughs> there should be a death penalty for that. It was just terrible. And, uh, you know, they even still do limited. I mean, if you go over and watch Family Guy, uh, it really looks good, but you have to watch carefully because what happens is if you've got, say, Meg Griffin talking, she's all animated. And eh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And everybody else is still. Else is They're still. completely frozen. You know, and maybe there'll be one little movement every now and then while she's doing her thing. Uh, but it, it works because you get drawn to that character and you don't see the others not doing anything, okay? And that's the way they save money on the animation. And they also save it by having it done in Korea. So, you know. Wow. Yeah. So, but, but I, I Tony, I got to get you off all that Hanna-Barbera stuff. I, 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 that stuff, I, the box that, of I don't care if it was on your box of cereal. It, it, was, it was as... as Cartoons go it was pure and utter crap. Oh, I ate it up though. I couldn't get enough. <laughs> I couldn't get enough of it. I mean, I love that. Stuff. There, it, oh. I'll tell you if you want to talk about great cartoons, there are two great cartoon things. If uh, anything, basically, in the Warner Brothers universe, mm -hmm. within a certain period of time, after about 1955, forget it. Uh, when, if you go back before. Uh, when you go back to Leon Schlesinger, yes, so-so. But when you get into that great period of, of Warner Brothers cartoons with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and Elmer Fudd and that, you know, some of the best cartoons, funniest cartoons ever made. No question about it. And the other guy is Tex Avery, uh, who I have a picture up here. I, I, you can't see it from here. But I actually have the Frito Bandito, a cell from one of the commercials for the Frito Bandito. Remember the Frito Bandito? Well, that was animated by Tex Avery. Uh, and Tex Avery was, was just the best. Just the best. So, oh, wait a minute. He's going to go get me something here. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. He mentioned something. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, let's see here. Do I have anything else? I have a Ren and Stimpy up here. You can probably see right in back of me. Uh, that's not a salvo. That's an actual drawing that they did for me. Uh, oh, do you like these? Uh -huh. Hmm? Can you see these? What are those? I can't, I can't see. The Scarlet Witch. Um... What, is, what is that? Throw them over Bell. Huh? From the old Marvel. purple cartoons? Yeah. You know those? Uh, well, I, I used to have them on DVD, too. And Do you know who's, do, you know who's doing some interesting animation lately? Oh, yeah. well, that's nice. You know who's doing inter interesting animation these days, by the way, is DC. Oh, uh, I love their cartoons. The, I've got the it, DC app. I love it. Yeah, they're doing some great, great work. With I mean, animation, the it's animated it's, cartoon series holds up good still. I watched. I was watching it from season what? one, just to, you know, watching in order. Batman animated. No, no, no. no we're not talking about this. We're talking about the movies they're doing. Oh, I'm on the cartoons again. Uh, no, I'm not, uh, no, not the cartoons. Uh, yeah. All the actual movie cartoons. Yeah, not the actual movie. Uh, yeah, the the the, the, oh, yeah. the no the cartoons they have made at full length as movies like. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what's what? Oh God, I can't remember the names of them. My mind's a blank. I may as well just go home. Wait a minute, I am home. I am home. Oh, you know what? Yeah. I, saw, I saw Gotham by Gaslight on the DC app. That might be one of the ones you like. About when Batman tries to find. When Jack you say the DC app, are you talking about uh, the DC the, the, ch channel? Yeah, DC Universe. Yeah, the DC, DC Universe. Yeah, I have DC yeah. Universe. I right. love DC Universe. I, I mean, I watch that more. I tell you, well, you give me HBO and a couple of these other apps, I'm pretty much good now. There's just so much on there. There's too much to watch. I, exactly. I'm sitting here. I don't even know I, 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 after Sunday and Monday are here, a girlfriend and I have too many things to watch. We are watching, uh, uh, we're watching Get Shorty. We're watching Godfather like of Harlem. I'm watching Watchmen. 
I, I'm watching, uh, we're watching, uh, of course, we watch John Oliver. Are you like uh, And then we have to watch, uh, and she has to watch Catherine the Great. And there's a new show out called His, oh, what's the name of it? God, hold on a second. HBO. There's so much content. That's good. Uh, I, I watch Silicon Valley. Oh, I like that you too. Know, that's like that's nice my thing. my thing, Silicon Valley. Let me see here. That's not what I want. I don't want that. Let me see. Would you HBO. do you think this is the new golden age of television, Alex, with the streaming? No. no? His dark materials. Well, what's that? Uh, it's it's an amazingly beautifully done show. It's gorgeous oh. with James McAvoy, and Lynn Well, Manuel, like Nor uh, Miranda. Uh, Ruth Wilson, uh, and it is uh, uh, it's a fantasy thing. It's kind of about an alternate world, okay? Oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, in, in which it's, uh, they say, it's a world like yours and ours, only different, you know? And it's a world in which there are animals who are part human. Uh, they're animals, but they have human abilities like talking and things like that. And they uh, uh, they are called the uh, daemons, and they are the equivalent of human beings. I mean, it's it's very strange. You got to watch it. It's very interesting. It and like I watch Silicon Valley, watching Mrs. Fletcher. Okay, I mean, it just doesn't end. I mean, uh, uh, and by the time we're through, we're, you know, the Shark Tank. We throw in Shark Tank oh, and all of that. My sister watches that and I got her on that. Yeah. Shecky got Shark Tank numbers. This is addicted to it. Yeah. Sunday night, right? Mm hmm. Is I can't, I can't talk. I'm not watching Shark Tank. She I can't. watched it forever. You know, I, and, well, and, and now I've started, just, I've started watching a, uh, a thing on uh, HBO, not HBO, on uh, Netflix. Is it Netflix? Yeah. It's on Netflix about uh, this uh, this guy they found in Cleveland, who turns out to they think to have been uh, Ivan the Terrible, a concentration camp guard who was one of the meanest guards of all time, who used to like have yeah. had a sword as he as he sent people into the gas chambers. He would like cut off women's breasts and cut off people's arms and then throw them in the gas chamber and kill them. Uh, and they found him living in Cleveland, or a guy they believed to be him living in mm -hmm. Cleveland, and they d deported him to Israel where he went on trial in what was one of the most celebrated yeah. trials in the history of Israel. Have you heard about this, Charlie? No. I'm yeah, not I remember. remember. I remember when it was happening. Uh, Demuniak yeah. is his name. I, I think, I don't know if I have it right. Something exactly. like that. Began with a D, yeah. Yeah. How old was he when they got him? Oh, he was he in his... his he was in his... Uh, 70s, 60s, late that 60s, maybe amazing. 70s, and it, it. I haven't watched the whole thing. I don't. I don't remember the case. I mean, I rem vaguely remember the case, but I don't remember how it turned out. So it's kind of like watching a detective oh, drama. It. In I would watch like that type of stuff. The documentaries like yeah, that. Yeah. You well, know, this thing is six episodes, and they're all Ooh. about 45 minutes each. Yeah, and uh, so I'm in the middle of that. So. So well, I have I have so, a lot on my I have a lot on my plate and I better not have cancer and it better not kill me anytime soon because I have to finish these shows you know and then you got more shows coming in January yeah, yeah well that's what worries me I love my TV in the winter oh what happens is next week on the twelfth at the end of well is it the end of this week maybe what's the twelfth when's the twelfth today is I think the fifth the eleventh is. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. The twelfth is uh, is um, oh the twelfth is next uh, next Tuesday. Tuesday okay, yeah. that's the day. the day the Disney Channel Ooh, goes on I Disney it, Plus. I get to see Star Wars. You already saw Star Wars. My brother says it's a TV show though now. Oh, oh yes, they have Mandalorian. You think it'll be yeah. any good, Alex? I'm going to check it out. I, mean, I have no it, idea. So. Oh, I thought maybe you saw a sneak peek or something. No. I just saw the trailer a few yeah. times. I want to see and, what you And uh, there I've got, uh, I've got. Uh, let's see here, you have uh, all the Disney cartoons. That'll eat up. Um, I heard a horrible thing, though. What did it, uh, uh, um, Shecky told me about this. Uh, AT&T mm -hmm. is, oh, no, Disney 
is retiring a whole bunch of old movies from the 40s and 50s. Do you know the name? Which well, one? No, the name from, uh, they bought up 20th Century Fox, and so it's a lot of 20th Century Fox films like Grapes of Wrath that are no longer going to be available. Holy they, shit, that's a classic, no? You would think they would put them on the Disney Channel, and then I would really love them, but no, they're taking them out of circulation, so they're not even going to wind up on like Turner Classic Movies or places like that. Any yeah, reason why they do it? Uh, it's the old Disney thing. Remember, you, they used to have a thing called the Disney Vault. Well, you better buy this before we put it back in the vault. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you think this is a way for them to push the merchandise, like buy yeah. the movie? Uh, so I, I don't think the that's their reasoning. I, I, I don't know. I give up on on Disney. You know, they just own too fucking much. Yeah, they're big. You know. I mean, uh, they, they've got every major franchise in the world. It's, it's, Do they got Harry Potter too or no? no Harry Potter's Warner. Oh, okay. So that's AT&T. Oh, AT&T got Harry Potter. They have, all the, they have all the stuff that Disney doesn't own. Mm, you know. Shit, that's a front. Yeah. So it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty lousy. But anyway, so we got all these shows we watch. We're up to our ass in shows. Oh, and she's watching Catherine the, Catherine the Great. Did I say that? So, you know. Uh, so. Oh, what? what, what, what there goes the what, 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 Are you farting again? Is that what you're doing? They're, they're drag racing down my street. No. Oh. Funny, they put a they put a camera in on the on the light, so when they speed, it flashes off. They'll get a ticket because it keeps me up at night. When they spit, when they must go a certain speed, yeah. the light goes off. They get the plate. That's what they tell me. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, it's right in front of the house. So when they speed, you'll see it flash off, and they get a ticket. They send it to them digitally. Oh, so good. That son of a good. bitch That'd got a be ticket nice. because they speed down here at night. Like, forget about it. That's what you just heard. They fly. Well, down you know the what street. I have in my neighborhood. I have noise. People just making at three o'clock in the morning. They're talking oh. at the top of their lungs, and I'm sure going. Do you realize you you're talking right next to an apartment house? You fucking inconsiderate pieces of shit. I was shit. just gonna say that's just yeah. When we used to have the bar down the block on Friday nights, they used to come out drunk, and then sometimes they would fight. In, I used to be, and then they'd start shaking hands, and they'd start fighting. I, I, I had an apartment the downtown. I had an apartment downtown at the front, uh, the very bottom of our apartment house, and then over a little bit to the right, was a club, okay? And um, uh, I guess they did have a sign outside that said, we have neighbors, please try to keep quiet, but they never, you know, they're too drunk to read that by yeah. the time they get outside. <laughs> so they would start making noise like crazy. So one morning at about 2 o'clock in the morning, they were out there yelling and screaming and everything, and I just said, I've had it with this. And they're right... Like, I'm up on the sixth floor, and they're right under my window. So I go to my cabinet, and I get out the biggest pot I can find. <gasps> and I fill it up with water. <gasps> That's funny. You dump the cold water on them, break their ass up, yeah, take it yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it should have been boiling water, but no, it was cold water. Oh, and, and I open up the window, and they're yelling and hiding everything. And I just take it, and I just dump it. Now, what's funny is there's a period of time between the time mm -hmm. the water hits the ground and the time you've sent it out. This is all physics, folks. So yeah, I throw, I throw all the water, dump the whole thing over. I just dump it, right? So that it's in one big glomp is going down, right? <laughs> and, and it's nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> and I went bingo, and, and it got it was, quiet. It got really quiet. Threw a towel out to him. <laughs> I should have thrown a towel down. Oh, I don't know who did that, but he has a nice warm towel to wipe yourself off. Yeah, yeah, here's some, yeah. I hate that. It is rude because they can't. They can't. Just, they got to wake the whole freaking neighborhood up. Well, you know, we don't. We don't have. I don't think anymore. We, we people are not civil. You know, uh, we've lost civility. Uh, and I think that's an important part of society. Am I sounding like an old fart now? 
No, I think you or, or, like or do I think that think people being civil with you. other people and being considerate of other people is very important? You know, it's just it, it's what a society is measured by, so far as I'm concerned. Like, you want to laugh, Alex? I don't want to sound grumpy, but I was afraid to put a pumpkin in front of my house that blows up because last time we bought one, they slashed it. So now we have to keep all our decorations in the house because when they come out, you're going to have these punk kids. They slash the pumpkin. They slash my reindeer, you know, the inflatables. So it's like mom's like, you want to get a reindeer for Christmas? Well, we're afraid to. They're going I'd to put expect that out of my neighborhood, but not out of yours. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Cause, do you, I mean, live, do you live in the poor it. part of, of Queens? Is that what it is? It, well, I think it's just the, the bad seats walking to Queens Boulevard, I think, because they get out over here and then they walk all the way to Queens Boulevard to get the train. Oh, I see. And I know they're coming. Because you're, you're not you're not like up in uh, Jamaica Estates like Shecky. No, 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 not at all. But it's a quiet area. He's in a nice quiet area, though. I said it's like Long Island out there. Yeah, yeah. You can actually hear the crickets. It's like, that's not, I can get used to that. Not the yeah. car going by 90 miles an hour waking me up out of a dead sleep. <laughs> well, I, when I first moved in here, I heard crickets, and I suddenly realized it was air conditioners. You know, so, <laughs> you know, I didn't have it. Is anybody else going to call tonight, by the way, or is it just this is going to be the party for tonight? Yeah. You know? I'm not, you never know. I'm not putting this out on uh, Facebook uh, tonight. I decided not to do that because... I don't get the kind of numbers and results that I do off of putting it out on Facebook. So it's not worth me doing, you know. Um, I mean, I, you know, I could put it up on Facebook right now and then yell and scream at everybody for not, mm. you know, not watching. But uh, let's see, Vernon Dunn says uh, the government doesn't get involved in redistricting. Oh, the dem oh, the, the, the governor. He the governor doesn't. Yeah, he's got this whole thing going. Oh, you, I thought you, you, he had to sign the bill. Yeah. When they did this, I thought yeah. he had to sign it. Yeah. You're, you're saying Ronnie does look good, Charlie. You were saying that online. Yeah. yeah. I was. I, I love it. That season looks great. I like the way yeah. her hair grew out. Yeah. 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 Hey, somebody also wrote, How's Will Durst doing? Uh, last thing I heard, improving. Uh, not you know, head and shoulders and whatever and moving along at a rapid pace. But he's, he's, I think he's out of the ICU now. But he may be in the hospital for another, I think I read three months. Oh, my God. Good Lord. Yeah. How long were you in after your stroke, uh, Jeff? It took me a year. Oh. Wait, too early to get up to be able to talk. And communicate and and go back to work. Actually, yeah, yeah. But yeah. how how long were you in the hospital? Oh, it wasn't very long at all. Um, <clears throat> you talking about from the surgery? Mm -hmm. It wasn't that bad. I don't know, a couple of days, maybe a mm. week. Yeah, something I, like. That. I I don't yeah. know. I, I what what was the last word here? Hold on a second. Oh, that's wrong. I don't want that. Um, let me see here. There we go. Uh, I'll tell you in a second. But I would get this. She in a, is he in a, a specialty place that's... Uh, He's in a, ho is in a hospital. Um, Will was moved to St. Mary's Hospital's acute rehab facility. Oh, He's completed day two of OT and PT. What's OT? I know what PT is, that physical therapy. But it's occupational OT. therapy. Occupational oh, therapy, yeah. right. Yeah. And speech therapy. They work with patients at least 60 to 90 minutes on each, and he's beat but ready to improve. He's sleeping right now, blah, 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 blah. And then as I, and then I, I yeah. So that's, that. Uh, uh, he'll be here for another at least two to three weeks, excuse me, until yeah. they feel he can ha have a, uh, move to another rehab facility or go home. So, uh, you know, it's all baby steps, isn't it, Jeff? Yeah. You know? It's all right. Just keep working on it. It's, it's, it's hard. It takes a lot of effort. Now, what are the chances of him having another stroke? Or is strokes not like heart attacks? They're a different animal. Well, it depends upon what the cause was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the reason I had a stroke is because I was taking a, 
a drug uh, that, that was called Coumadin, and, and it often caused bleeders. Mm -hmm. So it was a certain risk that that was going to happen. But at that point, I stopped taking it. Right. And I started using some other stuff. And then ultimately, they had a uh, the reason that they had to take the drug is because I had a mechanical valve. Yeah. And the they had valve. A valve out and put one in that's a uh, an animal uh, yeah. valve. Yeah. Which also they had to go back in then too. So you got the pig valve like my brother has now. He had that done. I I have a yeah, what, what? action. I have two. I have a two? pig valve yes. and a cow. No. Yeah, yeah, I had to get tested. Uh, what if you're? What if you're? What if you're? What if you're kosher? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I don't put it in, keep you alive. You know that was scary. I so said you're not eating it. What? <laughs> the rabbi told me one. He told him you're not eating it. We we're talking about it, and he, he goes, he says you you're not eating it. Don't worry yeah. about it. You're okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Why? Oh yeah, I know why we don't eat pork. Okay. What did he say? It was well, the way it was. Was it the way they were? They killed the animal. No, think, no, no. It had to do with the fact that these were actually dietary laws, that were actually like f for healthy living. And in those days, uh, and even today, to these day, this day, that if you don't cook pork enough, uh, it used yeah. to give you trichinosis, and then you would oh, die. Shit. So pork was a very deadly food for people to eat, and that's why pork was considered non-kosher. It's halal, uh, non-halal as well in the in the Muslim world, and the, and and I guess the Chinese with the Buddhism didn't care whether they died. They'd rather, Did they really? They'd rather cats? have their ribs than you know. Wasn't that true? They said they ate cats in China or something, or no? Then they say, "Oh, you never see cats by." The Chinese so think they ate a, a, a dog. Dogs. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh shit. Yeah. If you if you do it as a uh, with a nice sauce, they're usually pretty good. Oh my god. Just, you know, a little Bernays sauce, I think, uh, works nicely on dog. What kind of wine goes with dog? Anybody know? I don't know. I bet you Phil might know. <laughs> he likes his steak. <laughs> I don't know. What would you drink with it? Oh, did you, what you call uh, that steakhouse in Peter Lugas got a bad rating, I heard. What? Really? The they got uh, one of the, I forgot who on the news ate it. They said it was overpriced and the service was bad and food was not up to snuff. They got a, the first time they ever got a bad rating. In well, Peter Luger's mm -hmm. been there for so long. They probably got, I, I, they I, probably I got, been, they probably got lazy. Could you went so huh? Was it good? I never been to Peter Luger's. Oh, then maybe you went there. No, no. I know in the supermarket you can buy the sauce. Used to be a. Huh? They used to have a second place. I don't think they still have it anymore. It, you know, Peter secondary... Luger's for people who are listening to us and don't know what we're talking about. Is it was a fairly well known steakhouse here in New York, but I always I never went to them because I figured they were probably highly over, over. That's what the guy said. Yeah. He said it was just the food wasn't worth the price. And they don't even take charge cards. I was looking on their website. Do you have to either pay with cash or their charge card? Or oh, their charge card. Huh? Their oh. charge card. They won't take anything else. The, yeah, okay. So you have to bring cash. They won't take a check. They, they won't take a check. I don't I'm not sure. They might take a check, but I don't, you know, hopefully they don't bounce, bud. I don't you know, know something? And everything's a la carte. I gotta I tell you this. And, and this may sound this is horrible. Uh, a while back, I got, I think it was my urologist that I was going to. He didn't take credit cards, right? Uh, and, and so consequently, I, I get a, you know, a bill from him, a copay. And I got to send him a check. Well, to begin with, I have to go looking for my checks. And the only checks I have... And they're still good. I can still use them. Are from a bank that no longer exists. They were absorbed by another bank, but I they and I guess I got checks from that new bank, 
Uh, and I'm trying to remember what the old bank was. It wasn't chemical. It was something else. It was one other bank. And I have the checks in there. I, you know. And so I had to. I got one of those out because I know they'd be ca they'd cash okay, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to write the check, and I can't remember how to fucking write a check. Mm -hmm. oh, shit. You know, really? oh, you got to do that whole stuff with uh, fifty-three dollars. You know, fifty-three dollars oh, yes. uh, and uh, uh, twenty-three cents, and yeah. and then uh, you know what? I I I just couldn't remember how to write out a check. It was just horrible. And then it came time for my signature. Oh, I don't okay. have a signature anymore. Neither do I. I've been illiterate. Yeah. With the signature yeah. I have no signature any longer. If I start doing, to begin with, if my name were Bob Jones, I think I could hack it. Okay? You gotta, but my you name know. is Bennett Schwarzman. I feel bad for you. That's a long one. And by the time I get to the R in Schwarzman, it's just I go... <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> <get a, laughs> you know... So everybody out there, you know how to forge my name now. Yeah. I, mm. Yes, what? I, um, my cell phone crashed uh, mm. today. Yeah. Maybe last day. But anyway. Uh, so I had to go get another cell phone. And, and anyway, so it doesn't work. I can't, you can't call, you, nothing. So the guy says, well, you got to know the four letters code to set this up. And I said, oh, crap. He says, uh, well, maybe you ought to call your wife. And I said, I don't remember her phone number. Yeah, because it's off speed dial. <laughs> That's right. I don't know Marjorie's phone number. Yeah, I have no idea. I have to look it up. Like I go sometimes I go down to the uh, to pick up her stuff from the pharmacy, and they have her credit card on file. But in order for me to get it, I've got to give the last last four digits of her phone number, and I have to go look it up. Yeah, you know, because I don't remember it. You know, uh, and I she mean, can't. But it, to be truthful, she can't remember my phone number. No, I'm sure. I mean. So. Um, uh, we just don't. We don't need those. We don't need those numbers anymore. They're almost insignificant. No. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, what happens is people, for instance, will live in California. Let's say they live in San Francisco and they've got a four hundred one five area code, and they move to New York with their cell phone. AT and T doesn't change their area code no. anymore. It's still four one five. You keep your old four one five. Big deal. You keep your two one two in New York or your six four six. You know, if I move to California and I go, now nah, I'm living in California now, send me the mail here, I'll still have a 646 number. They don't care anymore. It doesn't matter. You know. That's right. I mean, I, I got to tell you, folks, you know, uh, there was a time in this world when uh, people like myself and Jeff uh, and perhaps maybe Charlie, but not, I think, so much Tony, uh, when we would call someplace like uh, San Francisco, it would cost yeah. a fucking fortune. Yeah. 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 It was like, and it was it was by the minute or three minutes. Oh, was it three minutes? Yeah. It was like by three minutes, like a dollar for three minutes. Holy shit! So if you were down the phone with your mom for ten minutes, uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy shit! Yes. So I mean, uh, uh, it, it was. It, it was ridiculous. It, it, and then all that changed. And all that changed. Mm -hmm. A lot of that changed because they deregulated the phone company. And everybody else could get in the phone business. And people came along like MCI and gave cheaper rates and things like that. And now you buy a cell phone and you get yourself some AT&T monthly service. You can call anywhere in the United States. They don't give a shit. Yeah. You can talk for as long as you want to. They don't They don't care. You call in the world. Hmm? You can well, call anywhere. Uh, you can call out of the United States, it still calls the cost of yeah. fortune. Yeah. I, uh, uh, CNN projects that the Democrats will now control Virginia's Senate, House of Delegates, and the governor's office for the first time in more than two decades. So that's mm -hmm. good. 
Uh, Andy and, Brashear, a Democrat, obtained victory in Kentucky's governor's race. Okay, um, so this is looking this is looking very good. Um, yep, 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 yep. But incumbent Republican Matt, uh, Governor Matt uh, Brevin, says he is not conceding. Well, no, he's not. You know, he will. He'll he'll mm -hmm. he'll have to concede. I'm sure. But you know, I mean, it's it, it, it's uh, it's amazing. It's just amazing um, how how everything has changed that way, and how our communications and the cost of using a phone. I mean, Marjorie and I were talking about it. Uh, here's here's a good question to throw out to you. Which is the more important invention, the iPhone or the iPad? Oh, I would say the iPhone. Well, yeah. think about it for a second. Okay. I don't even have an iPad. Yeah, but you go to a hospital. Mm. They got them yeah, everywhere. You're right about that. They, they got, got them iPads. everywhere. You go into yeah. restaurants. What are they using for, you know? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. iPad. That is true. Uh, I think the i the iPhone was an important thing. It led gave, gave way to the iPad, which is then being used more as a tool, I think, than the iPhone is. But you go on a train here in New York City. When I say a train, I mean the subway. And you sit here, you sit there and watch around the, the car, and everybody's on their phone. Everybody. Yeah. I love the phone. There's nobody sitting there looking around, you know. Everybody's yeah. looking at their phone. You, that's a good thing. You observe. It's like everybody's got a computer in their hand. It's well, amazing. no, it, it, we have desocialized ourselves. Yes. We've yeah. we've opted out of society. It, the, looking at your phone is saying, "Don't talk to me." Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's text. Too. Did it get too good yeah. technology? No, but, you know, and it got too good. How many of you guys text every I day? I text. My sister texts me. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I text every day. You yeah. know, I mean, I text for my watch. I don't. I don't. By the way, I don't tap it out anymore. I now dictate it. It, it, oh, I can't it. even remember the last time I talked to my kids on the phone. It's always texting back and forth. There well, they, here, here's like what I always phone. found was interesting is that, okay, you text somebody. What do you, where do you text them to? What's the, or, what's the number you use? It's their phone number. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So while you're there... You have a choice of either texting them or phoning them. Why don't you just phone them and talk to them directly? And the answer I've gotten is sometimes you just don't want to talk to people. <laughs> really. Sometimes you just don't want to talk to people. So that's what it's come to. That's true. She tries to be nice. You know? The thing about texting, though, is you can text it, and it sits there until they're ready to look at it, whereas they might be busy, and they can't pick up the phone and talk to you right then. Well, what I hate is if you get in a rolling text thing where mm -hmm. you're talking yeah. to somebody, and somehow they write something, and then you write a reply to them, but while you're reply replying to them, they're writing another thing to you, yeah. and somehow you don't know the synchronization, the the you know, the way things synced up. Yeah, like I'm still three sentences back. And he's like, well, yeah. you know what I hate more than anything else? Do you ever use, do you ever go to, uh, oh, um, uh, sometimes you have to use it. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you go for technical support somewhere and you use their chat. Oh, yeah. I haven't, I can't that is it. annoying as fuck. Yep. Because you have. write something and then they write something. And then they ask you a question, and you answer it. But by the time you're going, they're writing something while you're writing something, and so you're not. Nothing's in order, and it drives me fucking nuts. Yeah, you know? it's almost like that's not customer service. And the other day, I was doing something. I had to use a chat because I had to somehow get through to this company to find out what was wrong uh, with their service. And I. Uh, uh, I, I, talk, I, I talked to this one guy, and he was from a foreign country, and I couldn't understand a word he said, so I thought I'd try the chat. And the guy who was doing the chat must have been the same guy I talked to because it was just as bad. Oh, you can read that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and finally, I just, I said, wrote on the chat, I said, 
you guys are totally useless. Goodbye. You know, I mean, it's just, but this is what's happened. We've, uh, you know, we, we thought in the future things would get better. And things are just as bad as they've always been. It's just a different kind of bad. You know, so, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah. Am I sounding like an old fart here? What? No. Well, I think the one thing change is the cell phone is becoming more and more a computer. Oh, it is? In other words, oh, it no. has kinds of capabilities that it, it didn't have. You have more power in this phone than, yeah. than, mm -hmm. than Apollo 11 had going to the moon. You know, if if they had the power this had, they would have, they would have done a lot more things. Yeah, uh, we have. Uh, it, it's amazing how much power you have in these phones. I mean, they are they are computers, and in fact, a lot of these pads are giving way to computers. A lot of the stand up computers, like I'm using here or down here, uh, uh, have given way to pads doing approximately the same stuff. It's just I can't do the same kind of heavy lifting to do this show, for instance, on a pad that I can do on my computer, which, by the way, today, for some reason, completely lost the Internet, wouldn't go onto the Internet. I think I've got a virus in this thing. And I have a well, virus catcher, but apparently it isn't finding it. So, you know, I, I, I just figure they, every computer, if you leave it on for a couple of days, will freeze up somehow. You know, they you always have to reboot them. Yeah. So, I should, you should, I, we should be able to have a, a automatic thing that reboots your machine like once a day when you're not there, just so it's all fresh. You know. But anyway, we have. You know, I just, uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I was hoping when I was a kid that I would live long enough, and I didn't know. I said, well, I live to be, you know. 70 so I can see something like this and and now I've lived to be 80 and I'm, I'm seeing all this stuff you know uh, that I only dreamed about when I was a kid and I thought it would be a better world and it isn't mm -hmm. you know it isn't and and my greatest depression in all of this I've got to tell you it's very important is that of all the promises that I thought I would have, I do not have a robot butler or a <laughs> yeah. robot maid. And I thought I was going to have that. You know, yeah, that, Jetsons, yeah. Well, you know what? You do have the little things. The uh, what are the things to put on the floor in the vacuum? The rumbas or whatever you call them. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll tell thing. you what. I'll tell you what. My somebody at uh, at. Oh, at uh, Play TV, I play Incorporated. It was my friend Paul Montgomery, God bless him, is long gone. Uh, said, he said we all thought the future was going to be the home of the future. We didn't realize what we were going to get. This was an interesting comment. Was the office of the future? Mm -hmm. That in fact, what you've got yeah. here isn't the home of the future. This is the no. office of the future. You know, and that, that the, the things we thought we were going to get in our home, we really haven't gotten. I mean, hey, Echo, turn off the studio. I have mood, now I have mood lighting. Echo, turn on studio light. Could be a little the most use I get out of my phone is work. You know, I can do Excel, I can do Word, I can do all that stuff on my phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you can, yeah, right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it really, what's happened is it, we've really gotten, we're living in the office of the future. And the problem with that is, is that in the old days, when I was a kid, and when I was a kid, that was a long time ago now, you know? Uh, when I was a kid, uh, when you went home from work, you went home from work. Yeah. 
You couldn't work That's anymore. It. You couldn't, you could, there was no way when you went home that you could work. And by the way, home was a safe place because there was no way they could get you. Yeah. Oh, they could call you, but most of the time they didn't because they weren't near a pay phone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Remember a pay phone? You ever see a pay phone lately? Oh, I still mm -hmm. like no pay phone. They don't even exist any longer, yeah, which is great because in, in New York, they were, myself. Uh, yeah, people were using them as toilets. So, you know, I mean, yeah. but you, you, you had an eight hour day and then you were through working, you went home. Now you're always on call. You know, mm -hmm. we're sitting, we're lying there watching TV and all of a sudden Marjorie goes, oh, got to do something. And then she goes to the computer and has to check why somebody's credit card at her office wasn't working in Hong Kong. You know, and in other words, you go home, that's not the end of the day. And, and I told one of my bosses, it's serious, my program director, I said, you know what you really should do? You should promise me that you're going to go home and you're going to turn off your cell phone. Because the night before, I had, like, I don't know, texted him something, and I didn't want an answer then. I could wait till the next morning. But I just wanted to let him know about something. And all of a sudden, he's uh, he's uh, do, uh, writing me back. And it's like 10 o'clock at night, and I'm going, don't you ever have you time, you know? People, truthfully, don't have an eight-hour day anymore. They're always on call. So... Is that healthy? Mm -mm. You know. So. Mm. But you wouldn't know well, about this, uh, uh, Tony, because uh, in your job. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, we all, home. You're always on call. I know. At least she's sleeping now. I hear her cutting wood. I gave her two town OPMs out like a light. What do you mean, cutting wood? She's snoring. The little woman is I'll snoring. tell you what, it's making me loopy and I can't remember shit. But, she snores for a little short woman. But um, uh, I, uh, th these pills that I get I put me at so. night, put me out, just, I'm gone. Okay. Yeah. This, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, the Lyrica is what it's called, is the brand name. These is the, uh, the generics called Pregabalin. Um, so. I just, you know, it, they just put me out. But they also make me loopy. I don't, you know, like I can't remember stuff. Like I would love to remember the guy who used to draw the t in the Tex Avery cartoons, and I, uh, and I, and I can't remember. Do you want me to Google it for you? No, I, I, I you know, I can, I could uh, Google it. Uh, oh, hold on a second. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. You see, and okay. when I see the name, I'm going to go, oh, boy. I'm curious on who it is. Tex Avery, Red Riding Hood, Riding Hood, cartoonist. Okay. This was the guy who designed it. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Uh, Tex Avery released Wikipedia and the Red Riding Hood. Yeah, but it doesn't, doesn't say who drew her. His name was, I, God damn it. Why don't I know her his name? Uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Right, right, well, I made an animated film by Tex Avery. Does it have any credits? No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. It doesn't, doesn't list his name. Hmm. Well, this guy was terrific. He was the guy who designed the designed Red Riding Hood. Uh, let's see here. There's a Wikipedia thing. Let me see here. Uh, do they have? No, they don't. Hmm. Son of a bitch. I'm, I'll I'll remember. I'll get his name the next. All I have to do is look at one Tex Avery cartoon, and the credits will be there. Well, wait a minute. Here's a Red Riding Hood cartoon. Uh, let me just. Uh, well, let me let me play it, and. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll I'll just play it here, but I will uh, I'll make sure that I've got the. Uh, there we go. Hold on a second. The, I'm watching the Red Riding Hood cartoon. I had to turn off the audio. Uh, uh, directed by Tex Avery, and then uh, it, the name of the. Uh, okay, what? 
didn't have his the credit on there? They should have. Son of a bitch, they didn't have the credit? There's, a, there's that. Red Riding Hood by Tex Avery. And then they didn't have the credit? <clears throat> That's ridiculous. They always used to have a credit of all the people that did the cartoons. Somebody cut it out. Looks like. Let me see here. Tex Avery, Rural Red Riding Hood. Okay, let's see if they have, uh, have it here. By the way, Rural Red Riding Hood, one of the greatest cartoons ever made, folks. Uh, skipping three, two, one, skip. Okay, here we go. What, wait a minute. Skip ad. What, what, what? It's another ad, a 26 second ad <laughs> with Tom Steyer. Fuck him. I'm not voting for him. Okay? Um, this is amazing. Uh, use cookies to, uh, no, you don't get my cookies. Oh, okay. Hold on a second, folks. Are you there? How about your little talking? Huh? What? How about your little How talking about machine? Echo? Yeah. Yes, Echo? Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't think, she, I, I bet Echo doesn't know. But okay, here come the credits again. Directed by Tex Avery. Okay, now the next card should be all the, who the cartoonists are. Here we go. Here we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. No. Producer Fred Quinty. Wait a minute. His name isn't on here? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That son of a bitch. Let me see here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cut him off like it didn't Walter exist. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Scott Bradley, Rich. Huh. Well, that's weird. I don't know. I'll find it out. I'll figure it out later. I'll, I'll come up with an answer on it for you. Wake up in the middle of the night and the name will pop in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he did He did Red Riding Hood, who was maybe the sexiest cartoon character of all time. If I ever wanted to fuck a cartoon character, it was Red Riding Hood. And uh, uh, I, I, Well, wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, Uh, let's see here. She's just gonna. He, she's just gonna say Tex Avery. Uh, Echo, who drew Red Riding Hood in the Tex Avery cartoons? Sorry, I don't know that. See, she doesn't know that. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, I'll. 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 Tomorrow, you know what it'll be? I'll be lying in bed tonight, going to yeah. sleep, and all of a sudden I'll go boom, and I'll have it. And that's mm -hmm. my, that's my dementia at work, okay? <laughs> because I all of us. I used to remember this guy's name like it was my own, and and right now I can't come up with it to save my life, you know. Uh, but uh, he was a guy that worked for Tex Avery and and drew specifically drew Red Riding Hood, you know, uh, and um, uh, I, I can't. Can't come up with his name right now, uh, but I'll I'll do it later. So anyway, uh, anybody else have that kind of dementia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you're you, it, I uh, Jeff, you're forgetting a lot, and I'm sure you are too. At 69. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, you're you're it me all the time. Well, you, then you can imagine what's happening to me, and it's these fucking goddamn pills. If I stopped taking them, I would remember it. You know. Um, but I can't remember it, so it's. Sucks. I used to say that I used to say that surgery was my friend. <laughs> my cardiologist told me, she goes, "No, it's not your friend. It's using your brain, and 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 every time you have surgery, you you give up some of your brain." Really? No, no, no. Yeah. Surgery is that profound on your psyche? Because the medications are very demanding. Well, you know what I what I what I said was is I I have never been operated on. I've never had an incision made into my body, and I kind of am happy about that because I think your body is a hermetically sealed envelope, as it were, and that by by. It, you know, by cutting into it, you break the seal. 
Sure do. You know, and I've never, I've never had any surgery up until this point. You know, I have a lucky thirteen. What? I've had thirteen surgeries. Really? Yeah. Well, you've had the toes, right? Yeah. Well, three of them were getting my six toes cut off. Yeah. Oh, three of them were getting your six toes cut off. So, what were the other surgeries? Oh, knee, foot, uh, two back surgeries, two eye surgeries. Of course, my vasectomy was one of the surgeries. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a bunch of stuff. Wow. Wow, you just, well, okay, you know. I have to write them down when I go to the doctors or else I won't remember all of them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I, you know, what I like is when they ask me what pills I'm taking. Mm -hmm. And I've got to come up with an answer to that one. I got to open up my cell phone, otherwise I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, folks, this is this is didn't what. Did you it's... ever go to the dentist, though? Did you ever have dental surgery? Yeah, but that's never. He, they don't. Uh, they're not in. You know, they're not cutting your body open with that. You know, they're pulling something out of your mouth, or they're drilling into there, or they're you know. Uh, doing some doing something to the nerve, but they're not actually breaking into the the hermetically sealed oh. thing that's your body. You know, I mean, even if I if you go to get uh, oh I don't know, let's say I got a, 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 a what do you call it a, a, a for my prostate a, a what's the word? biopsy biopsy. That's not really, you know, invading. It's simply going in to an area yeah, you can get. I wasn't even counting that. What? I wasn't even counting the two biopsies I've had. Oh, really? What'd you have biopsies on? Well, I had an allergic reaction to bug bites, and so they took a chunk of skin out to do a biopsy. Boy, on you're, I didn't know you were that much of a mess, Charlie. I'm telling you. Oh. Been falling apart for decades. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he smiles nice. Oh boy. Oh boy. I, hmm? I, I yeah. gotta tell you, I talked to a friend uh the other day and she's gonna go to the dentist and she's gonna have a lot of implants put in. Yeah. All of her teeth put up. And oh. she says to me she says, you know, on Monday, I'm going to have a whole bunch of implants put in. And I looked at her, and I said, they look fine. I'm looking at you. They look great from here. So I'm rather than looking at her teeth, yeah. I'm still looking down at her, <laughs> at her chest. At her what? I, saw, I looked at her chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, um, yeah. Uh, she shouldn't worry about it. I mean, the implants are fine. You know, I've had them. They're, they're, they're a no-brainer, really. Anyway, that, that's uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, we didn't have many people calling tonight, but so what? You know, it's been a nice little crowd here. Nice little kind of, yeah. just, it's like uh, having a tea, okay? Uh, yeah, whatever, or coffee whatever anyway hey listen that's that's it for tonight thank you very much charlie i appreciate it and jeff i appreciate it and tony i appreciate it the regulars who keep me alive here while all other people don't call me anyway uh um boy i got i'm still trying to remember that guy's name and it, 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 it's not even kind of closely coming to me yet but it will. Don't worry. As soon as I sign off here, I'll remember it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, what I would do, uh, guys, if you can do it, is I would wave goodbye to the audience out there, and I will wave right back at you. Okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, small one, but mighty. Okay? Uh, and uh, uh, Phil won't be here tomorrow night, so all the guys who normally won't call because... Phil is here. Don't have to worry about Phil being here. Um, I will, however, uh, right after. Uh, well, let's see. Tomorrow night we've got uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, the uh, uh, sports show with the franchise MC. Uh, that will be on at eight thirty 
Eastern Daylight Time, and then at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time, it's uh, The Exchange with Damian Chaplin. I'll be back tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.